Hi everyone, this is Pino Trovo again from San Francisco State. This is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And um, I'm gonna do a little video on how to build the rough cube for the uh, cube project. And uh, this is a follow-up to the to the other video where I showed how to position the, um, uh, the shape of the inside part of the cube on a page, okay? So this is what your cube might look like. You, know, you can't use this particular section, but we're just gonna use scotch tape, uh, quite simple. And we're gonna use a knife to um, cut the parts. And we're gonna try to put as many parts connected to each other as possible so we don't have to do too much um, taping. Okay. So um, the uh, first what I'm gonna do is sort of yeah, quickly go over again what we did in the previous video, which was that we took, um, oops, this is the more complicated one. Sorry. Okay, this goes with this. Um, so if this were your original section, this was your sequence with determining how the cube would be made overall. Um, then we, uh, we built um, the, the inside part, of course, is fairly easy because you know exactly what it looks like. Um, Always keep a little uh, storyboard of your um, of your shape, um, and always mark your first original shape so that that's your reference point um, where to start. And whether or not you use these templates, these uh, grids that I uh, provided, it doesn't really matter, right? But ultimately, you would have come up with um, the shape for the inside of the cube, which in this particular case looks like this. And we saw earlier that we put it, um, we use tracing paper once we figured out that shape in combination with the outside shape. And we use this tracing paper to determine how the, um, how the drawing would look like in the previous assignment, okay? Which is really more of a documentation. Now this could work as your template to make your parts, but we're gonna now put it away and create a new one, okay? From this drawing, from the master. Whether the master is optimized, meaning whether some triangles have been combined to make a single shape or not, depending whether or not your design requires it or includes it. Um, it's not required, even if it includes it, you could just leave it as separate triangles. But if, if you wanna make it nicer, if it does include it, you could make it nicer. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll use the same pieces to create all our parts. So if you look at the storyboard, what we need is of course, four squares for the sides and two squares for the top and the bottom. So six squares total. Um, so you could draw them from scratch using triangles, right? Measure, et cetera, et cetera. However, you could just use this. Um, and the difference here is that you can use them. You can make four separate ones as opposed to make them all connected, which would be a little tricky if you're using this and you have to match the connections. Um, but this definitely you have to make it separate parts. So what I'll do now, um, oh yeah, and earlier too, what I did was from this, I transferred using a push pin. Okay, I transferred these shapes onto yet another piece of paper, a good, you know, stiff cardboard. Uh, well, it's not cardboard, it's a hard stock. Uh, that, you know, again, a, a cereal box might be the same weight. And I redrew those parts. Um, so that now this becomes my new master. So this is my original first generation. This is second generation, but I'm gonna use it now as my first or, or original to make all my other parts, okay? So uh, let's see if we can do this. And then, because I've already made one, okay? One half of that particular cube, I'm just gonna make another one and then we can test it. Um, 
And this, of course, is ideally what you would want to do to see if your shape is correct, right? Uh, when you actually build it, um, to know if your drawing, right? Would you record it in this drawing to know if this shape is correct? Really, the only way for sure to know is if you if you made the parts and you built it, right? If you, if you built it up. So it's a little bit of back and forth. Um, so um, it has to be cardstock because by the time you poke this thing like four or five, six times, um, it's gonna get a little bit up. So it's good to, uh, to have something you know, fairly, fairly stiff. Um, another thing is that you can, because we're doing scotch tape, we don't need any kind of tabs at all, right? To put this together because we're just gonna use scotch tape. If you were going to use tabs, um, it would be done slightly different. Um, so now we can just cut, you know, this thing and it will be two parts, right? And then you can separate them um, like that. And what's nice is that if you make a little mark here, you'll know then that these two pieces belong to each other so that each one is gonna be like a perfect pair. So the fit will be perfect. Um, but if you were to add tabs, you would have to construct this separately because then you would have to add the tabs here. But we're only gonna talk about the tabs if you're gonna do the um, uh, refined cube, which is not extra credit, but it's optional. So if you do it, you get points for that. Um, and it's just a slightly different uh, build, which would have, um, let's see, yeah. This is a different a different design, but you would have the tabs um, actually built. We used to make them the tabs on this piece. Um, in other words, you know, it's hard to show now. Um, but we figured that it's actually better to put them on the outside of the cube because that gives us a nice resting place for when we put it together. Again, if you do the refine, if not, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, but the drawback of that process would be that you would have to cut these from separate pieces. And so the cut would not be a single cut and you might have variations, but for now we don't worry about it, okay? So let's just quickly transfer um, this to some paper. And um, I happen to have some nice paper, which let's see if I have the label. So if you happen to go to a, an art supply store, this is what you would wanna buy or similar, okay? It's, the brand is Canson. It's, uh, let's see, 160 grams per square meter, which is the weight or 98 pound. Um, so that's a hundred pound cover. So it's like a little bit heavier than, um, yeah, a report cover or maybe like a business card, okay? So, and it's nice if you do two colors, like if you did the outside and the inside uh, to different colors, you can also use white for one of the colors or you could also make it all white if you have nothing else. Um, so here we go. I would try to not waste too much paper. So it was nice not to be wasteful. So let's say I do the outside, uh, I don't know, green. Oh, you need a, um, a substrate, like a little material, like a, a good piece of chipboard or the back of your pad, um, you know, the back of your uh, um, sketch pad would be good, okay? Because you need to poke those holes through. Um, you don't want to ruin your table either, right? If you have a table. So now I could try to match the corner of the paper, but I, I, that's just too, you know, too time consuming. So if I find my push pin, I will just you know, poke those holes. And, um, and then uh, you have to really redraw that once you do that, right? Oops, that was a mistake because I'm out there. Uh, why don't I just do first, let's see, I need two plus the bottom, so I need, I better make sure that's not good. 
So I need two squares for the sides, right? Um, yeah, because even though they're gonna get split up, um, that's exactly what I need. This, this, and these two make up two squares in total, okay? So let's do that. My push pin has gotten really blunt. It's kind of not so great. You could use your compass, but then I'm afraid that I might ruin the compass. And if you can't see them, what I do is I just draw little circles around it, around the holes. And you can always erase those later, right? Okay, so those are two. And now last I'll do one square. Just the square, not the uh, section. Okay, so that. Okay. And just to make the video short, I'll probably just do this simple cube. I won't do the other one because um, the same same things apply. Okay. So. So yeah, now I just have to draw it. Um, now. Again, like I said, you could draw these from scratch, but obviously the chances that it's not gonna be as precise unless you use you know, really tight, um, you know, two triangles, D squared, et cetera. Uh, this is not, for the purpose of the assignment, it's actually good enough, okay, to do it this way. And it will be fairly, fairly fast. So this is actually the assignment that's due a week from tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday. Um, of course, in the next semester, the dates might be different. So um, for those people seeing the video then, um, adjust your calendar as needed. Um, okay, uh, it, it, you might be tempted to like, oh, do I need to really trace this? Can I just cut it? No, you should trace it because because if you make a mistake, then you don't know what the correct line is, right? So I recommend you actually, you know, take a little time and do it. Um, okay, and now as it happens, the whole thing I was saying about the perfect cut, <clears throat> it won't apply to this because It, it would only apply if I'd made, you know, all four of them at the same time. And then I'd split the parts, you know, exactly like this, you know, away from each other. But because now I've already completed this, um, obviously that cut is not gonna be this cut, which is already existing, right? So, but if you did it all at once and then you separate it like this, you know, top and bottom, then you have that perfect match. Mm. So first I'll draw all the parts and then I will um, I will cut them, okay? And cutting is really no special thing aside from the fact that when you cut the inside uh, pieces, you're gonna need to score them, to cut them slightly, to make a little score, a little light cut, not all the way through so that you can fold it really nicely because this paper is too thick to fold by hand only. Um, and also because paper is kind of grain direction, some parts will be fold, will fold more easily and some will not, um, and it could get messy. So these are my um, outside. So now I'm gonna make the inside. And I know already that of these, I need two because basically I will be cutting it like that or actually, See what am I looking at? Yeah, like that. So this is how much I need, right? So this square and these two triangles, one and two square and two triangles. Sorry, right. actually like. Oh, I realized I did some. I did a mistake here. I transferred over, but then. 
but then I didn't I didn't get rid of it. So I have an extra. <laughs> I have too much material there. Uh, I'm sorry. I hope you watch this video because then it will it will yeah it will make a correction for the previous video. So the original was like this, but we moved one of these guys to bring it over, and so this actually is wrong. That's too much stuff. Need to get rid of that. Um, Oh boy, how do I edit that now? That's the problem with, with video when you do episodes and you don't have a script for the entire series, right? Oh well, um, at the worst, worst case scenario, you're just gonna have too much. It's always best to have too much, better to have too much than to have too little, right? Okay. So uh, that looks better. <laughs> like I said, there's not, thing like actually testing it. So I wouldn't have noticed that if I hadn't gone here and said, okay, what do I need? Well, obviously that's half, right? So now it looks right. So that's the square. And then these are the two triangles right here. And I need it twice. So, uh, yeah. So let's do that. Let's get this baby going. Um, this is a trick if you want to see if you're going to overlap, just move your paper back and forth really fast. Okay. Um, So now it's like invisible, right? So what I do is I look at it, I look at my original, it's like, okay, what are my squares? What am I? Yeah, there we go. That way I can make sense of it and we can already kind of visualize where they are. Um, so yeah, you definitely need the lines. And you can erase the lines before you actually fold it so it's cleaner. If you fold it and then you try to erase it, the stuff gets into the folds and it's just, it's kind of messy. Um, and you know, after all this work, it's still possible that, well, now I know it's gonna work because I've done it already the other half, but you know, there's always, it can always be something. So obviously double check, triple check. Um, you know, later when you do more projects in the, the department, you might do stuff with laser cutting, right? So, you know, you might do this drawing on the computer and then you laser cut it or you use some other gadget to cut it. Um, like, a, I don't know, something, a blade driven by a computer. So this will give you a sense of what it takes to do something, you know, correctly and precisely. And, and you can then appreciate, um, well, you can appreciate how things got done before we had things like laser cutters. Um, okay. Um, so now, before I actually cut this, I'm going to talk about uh, scoring and about um, the piece. So these are all going to be cut separately. So there's nothing, there's no scoring or folding because it's just joints, right? I'll be joining it at the corners. But here, because I have the separate parts, I have to fold it. So the way you want to fold, let me show you another diagram uh, from the other pattern, is that depending, um, yeah, this is the other design, but it doesn't matter. So depending on how the pattern goes, well, actually, let me show the, yeah, let me show the actual. So this is this design, right, I think. Oh, no, I'm 
not so sure anymore. One, two, four, one, two, three. Each of these, I think, is a different design. So, 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 I'm gonna. Yeah, this is definitely a different design. But let me just let me just keep it for a while. So I don't know if you've ever done origami. Uh, sometimes the folds there are called valleys or mountains, right? So this would be a valley. This would be a mountain. Valley. Nothing there. Mountain. So depending on the convention, one may be shown as a dashed line, the other may be shown as a as a continuous line. So that means for us, when we fold it, because this is fairly thick, we're going to use the knife. Um, if it's a mountain, okay, we're going to score on top. So the way to remember is score on top of the mountain and score under the valley. Uh, of course, these being the opposite of this, you could do them the same thing and then just flip one. So we'll see how that might work. But it's important that that is kind of um, clear because if you score on one side and try to fold the opposite way, it's not so good. Um, in other words, I'll just show you. And for this, you, you should use a, uh, you know, a metal ruler. So if I score this thing like this very lightly, it's, it's a slight scrape. Uh, the way I want to fold it now is, you know, away from the cut, right? Like this. If I try to fold it the other way, it's going to resist because there's no room for it to fold. Um, I tried to show that here. So if you're going to bend the two parts down, you want to score it on top because there is room. If you try to fold it the other way, um, there is no room. So let's see, what, where are the scores here? We have a mountain here. I mean, sorry, we have a valley and we have a mountain. And then we have a valley here and we have a mountain there. So, and then this is gonna be a joint. So what it means is that we have the opposite, but because we're not using tabs, so we don't really care which way it goes because we can just flip it. I believe that I can cut them the same and then um, just flip one. I believe, not 100%, let me just, let me just test it here. So if this is a mountain, I cut this on top, this is a valley, and then I do the same thing here, and then I flip this. So let's see, this would be cut under. Yeah, I think so. So let's test it. another experiment. Um, well, let's cut these guys first. Uh, so you should have a cutting mat, or you can get, again, a piece of chipboard. And what I do in this case is, is I just cut myself. By the way, again, alpha knife, good. Exacto knife, bad. I won't say more. Um, it's a much better grip than that you know, pen-like, you know, pen-like exacto knife. So. Um. You know, you always want to cut with the part that is the waist on the other side to, but in this case, I have no choice. I have to cut in the middle. Um, but when you cut these other pieces, you know, I wouldn't cut it like this because if I make a mistake, I'm gonna hit the, uh, you know, the part that I really need. So I always cut leaving the, the waist on the outside like that. And it's best to cut through. It gives you a sharper, nice corner. Um, so let's see. Yeah, 
this is the time when I have to think about stories to tell because you know the stuff just repeats. But um, I suppose I can. Well, you can speed up the video, right? It's it's easier for me for you to do that than for me to edit the video and spend hours editing the video. <laughs> so, um, what can I? What story can I tell you? Well, I can tell you the story that this knife was brought out in the seventies, and I've used it. It was recommended to me by the by my um, this is advisor a RISD which is Rolano School of Design where I went to graduate school and um, and he used to work in a newspaper where they would do a lot of paste up before computers uh, where everything was done by hand so he said he recommended that much more than a exacto knife make sure you don't use plastic to cut because it could ride on the plastic ruin the plastic also cut your finger and definitely do not use another piece of cardboard as a ruler because you could cut your finger like it happened to me many decades ago. Um, I should say also that I don't think it's the case with this cube, but when you make the cube, remember that this, if you flip them, you might get a different cube, okay? So it's always good once more to um, always refer back to your design and say, okay, that's the outside of, of my cube. So when I, when I make it, I wanna fold it one way and not the opposite way, okay? Otherwise, strange things start to happen and you feel like, what is going on? Um, okay, so I've cut my outside. Now I'll cut the inside. Yeah, there's nothing like good paper, good material. This, this, I think it might be 100% cotton. I don't know, but it's, it's beautiful, beautiful material. So what did we say? We said that we could just do. Well, if this is a mountain, this is a is a valley. So one or the other. So if I score this on top, I'm gonna score this underneath, which means I need to know where I am on the other side because there is no line. So what I need to do is make those holes a little bigger. Always do your scores um, before you cut the outside. Okay, so now I'm not going to draw it because I know what the points are. So I'm just going to score this. And I can even go. So again, it's a scraping sound. You don't want to cut through. If you cut through, you're going to have to repair it, right, with a piece of tape. So that's done. And, it, and this is going to be here on the other side. And again, you know, I can go, it's nice, I can go through all the way. So I repeat this, and I hope I was right in terms of being able to just flip it. So in other words, your parts, if you have, say, four such patterns for your cube, um, you can make them all the same, even in terms of the scoring, because you're going to be able to flip them, right? Because once half one side of the cube, right, is going to have the inverted pattern. This is a valley that's a mountain, but they are the same thing, basically. Now I better stop talking so that I can concentrate. There we go. So now I have my my folds, but before I fold it, actually. I have to cut them now because otherwise it's hard. Um, and that's it. So once once you have this cube, then we can use it for the next for the final drawing, which will be the um, isometric drawing of the two cubes, the two halves. Um, yeah, what else can I say? I suppose if you're ever going to do some packaging, this could be a useful um, exercise to, uh, you know, to see how things work and how they get put together and, you know, how you don't want to waste material, how the folds and the cuts and the, obviously, you know, 
packages are not made like this by hand or even with a cutter they usually make with a made with a die which is a kind of a stamping machine that will punch out the shapes out of a single piece all at once and we'll do the folds all at once too uh, if you watch the video about the uh, mail cartoon how they make them you probably have seen it all right so these are my parts and so once again to test your pattern even for drawing 19 ideally you would build this so that at least half of it half of the cube so that you could check it um yeah so what i said was to make it a little nicer although with the scotch tape is always already it's already not that nice so i could i could even just skip this step right but i'm just going to do it just to see if you if you want to you know be you know be neat right so why don't we do that um You could build the cube with the tape on the inside, but that's a little trickier. <laughs> so let's let's not worry too much, okay? Just just work with the basics right now. To brush all this stuff away. Yeah, as I said, it doesn't matter now that I mark this because they're not going to match any, at all since we have the other half. Um, okay. Somewhere I have a nice brush. Map everything. Okay, so of course, first I'm gonna, what I'll do now is I'll simply, I could do two things. Of course, I've made one already, so I could look at that, but um, say it's the first one you're making. Well, definitely I would do this. I would watch my pattern, right? And I would just simply put the pieces like the pattern shows. Um, and I would start, um, well, as long as I follow this, right? So, Let's see, this goes like that and like this. And if you notice now, I would be short here. I'm not short, but I wouldn't be able to attach it. So what happens is I can move this over. No, I cannot because I did something wrong. I did this wrong, yeah. So I can, I can move the shape right here over to this side. Oops move it over there so that's my shape and um, now when you attach tape if I do it really perfectly attached then it also it's a little tough to 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 bend so ideally ideally okay what you would want to do is to just leave a hair of a gap now the other thing would be to tape it and then fold it the other way, which I think would give us the same design, but I don't want to risk it now. So I'm going to just leave just a hair of a gap. Okay, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but um, the reason that is so is because if I put the pieces of board next to each other like that, and imagine this is the paper. Paper is a certain thickness, even. And I put the tape there. When I bend it, there's no room here. There's no room. It's going to hit each other, right? But if I leave a little gap, now, of course, I exaggerate it. Um, and I try to bend this this way. There is a little room here where that can bend, OK? And if the proportions were correct, it would, it would, show, it. It would show it better. So. Um, Yeah, so now I have a little gap, but as soon as I close it, right, and make my corner, you can see if you did it just about right, that gap is going to disappear, right? There is always something that you have to consider when you put together materials, they're never, um, you know, they don't like to go together uh, so easily. And I just have a big, a big block of scotch tape here, just 
so you see why it's easier. Um, let's see, yeah, it's a little tricky, but if, if, you, if you practice leaving this little gap, it's not gonna be too hard. Now I need the square. And I could put the square anywhere, but again, I leave a little gap, just a tiny bit. Uh, there are other videos about making the cube, you know, with the tab. So obviously I'm not gonna do that, but, um, but they're already there. So now we just go like this. I think, I believe if we did like this, yeah, if this, with this particular design, uh, we get the same shape, but that's not guaranteed that this holds true for every shape, okay? So in order to be honest now, I'll just leave it. You might want to pinch it and fold it to get a good, good, nice fold. You can see it's springing back, right? So just, you know, just try to get it a little pressure and then once you get it, go back. So, you know, show it next to it and then just kind of feel it until you do it right. Yeah. So, because if you apply too much pressure at the beginning, it might shift, but then you can be a little, a little harder. And my little corners are not perfect, but you know, obviously moving this fast, you can see there, quality control, <laughs> it's a little off. Um, but again, for our purposes, for this step, for this the way the, the, the project works. So right away, I can say, great, I've got two cubes, which are the same, right? I would be able to put this inside. That's the idea, right? Oh, I can't now because it doesn't quite fit perfect. But if I can put this inside, that's good. They have to be same in this, in this manner, okay? Now I just have to attach my pieces and I have to fold them, make them a little nicer looking. And let's see if I was right about, I think I am about. So after you do the, the score, it's really nice, right? The, it bends really nicely. If you didn't do that, if you just had a line um, and you tried to score it, you just don't know. I mean, this paper happens to be thin, but you just never know how it's gonna hit. So, um, so make sure you make that cut with the knife. Now this folds the opposite way, right? And really pinch it down, you know, fold it down so that it's really, okay, one way. And did I do this both sides? Yeah, no, it's good. So again, they're the same, right? But because the cube is symmetrical in that way we were talking earlier, I can now put one of these uh, here and the other one, hopefully, if I'm not wrong, and I could be wrong, I've been wrong before. Um, I think I am wrong. So it means that I should have scored them differently. Oh God, let me see. Yes, see, I was wrong. Okay, well, that's okay. At least I confess live on video. Um, meaning I was wrong in this to say that it was just exactly the same, you just flip it. No, because the, the patterns are different. Um, one is left and one is right. So what I should have done it is in fact score them different, right? I should have scored this the opposite way. I'm not gonna do that now, but I'm just gonna bend it backwards, which means it's gonna be a little messy. Uh, not not a great fold, but um, but I have no choice. Well, 
I could rebuild it. So, yeah, so there are in fact, there are in fact different. The two parts are different. In other words, one is like that, and one is like that. So, but let's build it and see what happens. I'll start with the easy part, the square down here. And again, I tried to leave a little gap, although it's getting harder and harder. Okay. When you attach these parts, try to go maybe like now, instead of doing this part first, do this corner so that you get the corner correct. There. And at some point you won't be able to go inside the cube to apply pressure from the inside, unless you had left this open. Um, but and because it's rough and I call it rough, but it really is quite precise, right? It's rough just because it's scotch tape, but it should be exact still in terms of dimensions. Otherwise, um, otherwise it's gonna be funny. Okay, so it goes like this. Almost done. I mean, you almost don't need scotch tape in some of these attachments because, because the yeah, because <laughs> because they'll fall into place, so to speak. So I'm gonna do the outside. You always have to watch, you know, your next corner to see if you're reaching it, because if you start being short and then short again, short again, after a while, everything is going to be out of whack. Um, it's getting tricky because you won't be able to access it anymore. So I'll do the parts that's a little harder first, this part. You have to kind of let the tape do its job, but it's not always easy. Sometimes you can use the knife to, um, the, you know, to guide it. So for example, like this, I can just pull and push. And you know what, I'm just gonna leave that out for now. Because it's, difficult. Yeah, it doesn't really need the extra. Okay, that's our cube. And you're going to need this cube later when we're going to draw it in perspective. Um, so they're exactly the same, right? They're two right-handed or two left-handed, but not a right and a left hand. And do they fit? And they fit. That's nice. Um, so what else do I need to say about them? Not much, except that you can see, you know, this is now nice and nice and flat because of that doubling of the triangles. And um, yeah, and that's it. Whatever you do, don't throw it away because we're gonna need it later. Um, so I'm just gonna stop here. The process would have been the same for the other design, right? Which I'm now, now gonna do, but I would have done the same thing for this design, except that here we have more cuts, more parts, um, but I would have, again, taken the, uh, So these are for those who have done uh, designs on a, on a four by four grid. I would have again taken this as my master and then that shape as my master, I would have transferred those to another cardboard piece, okay? And treat that as my new cookie cutter and from that made yet another part, all the other parts, okay? So I'm not gonna do that now because the process is exactly the same. And I'll just leave this, um, guys here okay thanks for listening again and um email me if you need anything okay bye bye